say hello Chelsea. Oh, okay. Vango Delta all the way. Say hi, Kenny. Hi. <laughs> There's a hippo on the left. There's a hippo on the left? Yeah, quite far. What's that up there? Is that a uh, fish African eagle? African fish eagle. An African uh, fish eagle. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Where is it? There it is. Wow. Thank you very much. Yeah. I shall. You know whether they got like different color like that one? Oh yes, it's the purple. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes, it is. The pollinated one. Oh okay. Ah, yeah. so when they're pollinated, they turn purple, do they? Yeah. Fun facts. We've got like two kinds. Okay. Uh, this one they call the day water lily. They open up during the day. Oh, and do they close at night? And then they close at night. Wow. wow. So with the night ones. Uh, now the old clothes at that at night, that's when they open up. It is, it is stunning. Did you want this one? I feel so bad doing that though. A flower nice for you, Chelsea. Very nice Thank smell. You. Wow, it does smell nice. Mm. You're right, oh, dead right. Yeah. Ooh. Sketchy. Oh, one in the face, there we go. <sighs> this is the life, isn't it? Laying back in a Makoro canoe, getting pulled down the Okavango Delta with a flower in my hair. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> I might just do a vlog with a view here and just tour. Welcome to vlog with a view in a canoe. That works well. We're in the Okavango Delta and we're in a Makoro canoe. Just drifting along through some reeds. Some lovely lily pads here that we vandalised by stealing their beautiful flowers. What have we done the last few days, Chels? Since I last did it, what have we done since high tea? What have we done? It's always it's always really hard to remember. Oh, Chobe River. Yes, Chobe River. So after so we went to high tea and we enjoyed that. I actually couldn't finish all the scones. There was just too many. Enjoyed the beautiful view, which is Vic Falls and the bridge just before it. Yeah. Then that evening, pretty mellow, early night. Uploaded a few photos nothing special. Then the next day we set off quite early. We went over the border, so we, we crossed the border at Botswana. Didn't have to pay for visas there, so I was a happy chappy because everywhere else we've had to pay like $75, something like that. So yeah, this was the first time we didn't have to pay, so that made it a lot more enjoyable. And the fact that the border crossing took, what, 15 minutes? Where all of the others have been like two hours. And then, yeah, we drove a little further. Got to Chobe National Park, which is another kind of national park waterway system. Not quite as splendiferous as the Okavango Delta, but pretty good going. And we went on a cruise there, which was just phenomenal. Saw loads of elephant. I just never get sick of seeing elephant anyway. Welcome to Chobe National Park.
couple more elephants here. Ne never get sick of seeing elephants. You happy girl now? Yeah, look at the little baby. Of all my favourite African animals, I'd say the elephant is my number one. What What would you say Chelsea's been the best animal to see while we've been in Africa? What What for you? Elephants and lions. Elephants and lions. Uh, I'd probably say the same. The lions I'm not so fussed about because whenever we've seen them they haven't really been doing much, they've just kind of been sitting there. But the elephant, even when they're walking around, like we had one try and charge, well, like bluff charge the truck when we passed by it, and that was in the National Park yesterday. So yeah, we went to Chobe, went on a river cruise, which was very nice. Got to see the sunset from the river. Plenty of elephant. Just tearing through, tearing through a little bit of excess grass. Yeah, saw plenty of elephants. A crocodile as well, a couple of crocodiles actually. Oh, and a fish eagle, an African fish eagle. We were very fortunate, just as we were passing by, leapt out the tree, went down, grabbed a fish out of the water. I think I managed to get it on, on tape. Okay, it's easy to miss, so I'll show you again in slow motion and zoom in. So, so that was quite cool. But it's only been a few days since we've left, not really been up to too much, so we had that. Then the next day we went to Elephant Sands, Elephant Sands which was a hostel just a little bit further, a little bit further down. It was only like a two hour drive to get there. And we had Elephant come straight into the camp where we, where we had been staying. Yeah, we had a couple of Elephant come right into camp where we were staying because basically the, the hostel was kind of situated around a watering hole. So the Elephant just, just came down after a drink and then we we're all just right there. I thought it was an opportune moment to try and fly my drone close to it, but like not too close because we didn't want to piss it off too much, especially seeing as earlier in the day we'd had one do a, like a bluff charge on her. So it's heading for the watering hole, is it? Yeah? Time to intercept. But it's quite nice, it just kind of fans you, it's really hot here. It's a right corker of a day. So yeah, we had the elephant come down, that was really cool. Chilled in the pool the rest of the day, so I can't complain. And then yesterday, it was a quite long drive, wasn't it? Yeah. Where did we go? We went all the way to the Yes, we went to Maul, which is still in Botswana, it's just a place in Botswana. It was about a six hour drive to get there. We rocked up yesterday in a very nice kind of hotel place. Um, although we didn't do, we were able to do this Makoro Trail through the hotel we were staying, but they charged like 35, 40 dollars more than this other company, which are the ones we're doing it with now. So we managed to get it for 90 quid instead of 125, which was quite nice. Oh, there's a nice breeze now. But yeah, that's been it. Not a massive update, but 
a beautiful view, which I think makes up for it. So we're here, we're here overnight. We're, we're staying in the off Bango Delta for one night um, with the Makoros. Very nice of them to put us up, very hospitable. Then tomorrow we head back and then the next day we're actually over the border to Namibia. So it's getting close to the last leg of the trip. We've only got after, after we leave Botswana, we've only got like two weeks left until we hit Cape Town. But um, yeah, I think that's a suitable update for now. Kenny, what's your what's your favorite animal? Oh, zebra. Zebra. Yeah, I Very like good. zebra. I like African fish eagle. Fish eagle. Yeah. Yes. Those two. Yeah, I'm a fan of the fish eagle. Yeah, they're all beautiful and you know, yeah. When we we're in Chobe National Park, we had a sea eagle kind of swoop down and grab a fish. What's uh, what's the biggest animal you've seen around the delta? Is it the hippo? Yeah, mostly you know the biggest land mammal is an elephant. Yes, yeah. Which is, uh, we also see some elephants here, mm -hmm. but normally we like for now because it's very, very wet. Yeah. So they all now move to Chobe. Yeah. So here we do have these palm trees, which is, uh, they've got fruit. Yeah. So during August time, all those fruit are already, all those animals, I mean, those elephants, they'll just migrate from those places and they'll come down here. Do you see many leopards around here? Yeah, but normally not, not easy. You know, mostly yeah. like leopards, they usually activate during the night. Yeah. yeah. Whereby during the day, they spend most of their time on the trees. Yeah. yeah. So only, even when you do like a nature walk, when they're up there on the trees. Cool. So they, either they can spot you in the distance, and then they can just run, run away. away from you. Yeah. So if you do like very, very early morning, uh, it's easy to see them. Right. Yeah. Early morning. We'll remember that. Do you ever have problems with uh, leopards keeping livestock? Yeah, 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 we do. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't know if you do so. When we started, there was that fence. Yeah. Which is uh, the buffalo fence. Okay. That's okay. for the government. So mostly, like, also here, they just made that fence. Yeah. Uh, to separate the domestic and the wild animals. Okay. Yeah. And here in the Delta, we do have elephants, which is uh, the breaking down those uh, fence. And other animals like leopards and, and lions, they would just go over and kill the cattle. Uh, yeah. Did the fence help at all or is it being... Yeah, I mean, from the beginning it did help, but for now it doesn't help. It's very beautiful. It is yeah. beautiful, it's stunning. And I can't believe how many animals we've seen yeah, yeah. already. Yeah, yeah it's, it's actually very good that uh, if you're like, traveling around, uh, it's good like you go like in different places. Yeah. yeah. You know, the more you do that, the more you see something different. So, we're at camp with the Makoro people. And yes, I'm a little bit OCD when I do these vlogs in as much as I like to kind of get a whole vlog's worth in one day uh, just um, I don't know like wearing the same clothes for continuity purposes and everything it's just my little OCD so yeah this is just like padding should we call it just to kind of buffer it out a little bit give me something more to talk about seeing as for the most part I want to try and get some really good wildlife movies with this and that's what I'm kind of mainly about I'll just make this vlog all about um, animals <laughs> So, we went from Nairobi in Kenya and we're now in the Okavango Delta in Botswana. So far we have seen a fair few animals.
elephant. Actually, when I think about it, hands down, it has to be elephant. Um, I've seen loads of them, don't get me wrong, it's not that they're my number one because I haven't seen them and when I see them I'm like, wow. We actually see them a lot. Of all the animals we see on a fairly regular basis, they're the ones that like, hands down, always take my breath away. I have been in awe, like every time I've seen an elephant, especially bull elephants, I got to go on the back of one, which I'm still a bit like morally unsure of, but it's still an awesome experience, I can't deny that. We've also got close to them in the wild. One like did a bluff charge of the truck um, as well. That was pretty cool. Every time I'm just in awe of their like brute strength and size, you just feel like the strength exuding from them. You just know that like if you tangled with them, you'd be like dead like that. Especially seeing as the fact that when we saw the one that was like really friendly and everything, uh, when we were in Antelope Park, it basically just brushed the top of Chelsea's head accidentally with its trunk and it like shattered her glasses in two pieces. Oh. <laughs> wow, it just snapped them right in half. Well, I mean, I'd love to see a cheetah and we actually haven't seen them yet, so that's a bit of a jammy answer because I'd like to see more of the cheetah, but I haven't even seen it at all yet. Well. Cheetah and African wild dogs. I love my dogs and it doesn't matter if they're large, small, wild or not. I just love dogs. So those are the two animals I would like to see. Animal I'd like to see more of. Crocodiles. I love my reptiles so I want to see more crocodiles but it has to be a specific type of crocodile in as much as it needs to be massive because all of the ones we've seen at the minute, like the largest ones have been about two meters in length, Nile crocodiles. And I know that they can max out at like five meters. <laughs> Probably all of the birds of prey, um, like we've seen loads, it's just the number that I've seen. I mean, I've seen eagles catching fish out of Chobe National Park right in front of me and got it on camera. That's how common it is that I actually managed to come across it actually hunting. But the birds have really surprised me. We've seen superb starlings, which are bright blue. Um, we've just seen loads of birds. Now there's a couple in this category which most people will probably disagree with my answer but I'll explain why. Now actually lions I have been a little disappointed by. Um, I think it's because you get so used to seeing them hunting and everything on these wildlife documentaries that when you see them you expect some kind of magnificent display of like strength and aggression or something. For the most part when we've seen them they've just been lying down and it, don't get me wrong, it's still awesome seeing them in the wild, but you kind of paint up this picture of this apex predator. The one time I was really in awe is when we actually did the lion walk. We were with two males that were 90 kilos in weight. I know because I asked, I didn't just guess. And I actually asked the guy how big they get and he said they like large male lions max out at about 250 kilos. So these ones were still relatively small in comparison with the overall size they can attain. So yeah, when I was doing the lion walk, that was that was pretty incredible. But up until then, whenever we'd seen them, you're still kind of in awe, but it kind of wears off. Whereas I found with the elephants, every time I see them, I, I look at them until we've, we've driven off into the distance. Even when they're not doing much, something about them like captivates me, whereas I didn't really get that from the lions. Number two is, well, it was rhino. Again, my opinion of that changed. When we saw Rhino in Ngorongoro Crater, now I had like an 800mm zoom for my video and it was so far away that even when it was stretched out to the full 800mm, which was like 500mm more than everyone else who had their camera, it was still just this tiny kind of pixel on the screen and you didn't really get any kind of impressiveness about that. But my opinion of that did change when we were in Zimbabwe and I got within about 40 feet of a male, a female and a baby. Um, that was pretty, that was pretty amazing. They just look really kind of prehistoric. You don't realise until you're up next to them and their eyesight's really poor apparently. So you can get relatively close as long as you're not doing fast movements or anything that might might intimidate them or spook them. So after that it kind of ticked the box for me. I felt like I had properly seen Rhino. <laughs> Most playful animal, that's a good one. Um, I would say, I would say for now it has to be monkeys. We've seen a lot of vervet monkeys uh, and they're always playful. They kind of work well from a human perspective in as 
much as I was able to basically like eat an apple down to the core, set my camera up, put the apple like there in the knowing that a monkey that was only about 10 foot away would, would come like right up to me to take this apple core and it did so I was happy from from a from a film filming point of view that was that was great mongooses as well mongooses are very kind of cheeky cheeky animals so we've actually I, I saw quite a few at Vic Falls and again I was able to get get quite close to them and they're proper like probably tenacious animals like the second day I saw them they were chasing a warthog which must weigh like hundreds of times their weight, like there was a family of them just chasing it. Most annoying, this is going to be, again, an obvious answer, it's the insects, it's got to be all the insects, but I actually find them really fascinating. We've seen loads of millipedes around, We've seen a few of these kind of skinny wasps, they're really weird, they're not like typical British wasps that are, you know, like average size, they've got this really skinny body, like bulbous tail, or bulbous abdomen, I should say. And yeah, I mean, they're annoying. They kind of fly in your face. The mosquitoes obviously win the award for most annoying animal in Africa because literally, I mean, I don't get bitten that much, or I like to think I don't, but in, in Africa, it's just like, I've just been demolished. My feet have been like a city of volcanoes for the last week. Ever since we kind of got to Vic Falls, they've just, just destroyed us. Other insects that I find really interesting. Yeah, that's what we're going to That's a bur burrowing cricket. It's just coming out of the ground. This is the biggest cricket I've ever seen. I mean, the wasps actually, those, those skinny wasps I was talking about, um, they pretty much keep their distance. Actually, earlier today, we watched one that must be a kind of burrowing wasp. It had its uh, hole in the ground. We saw it kind of fly over with a caterpillar, which was its um, unfortunate victim, basically, and just dragged it down into its lair where it's going to feast on it later. But like, it's, it's really interesting. To me, for an Englishman, I find that really interesting. <laughs> best place to see animals that's a good one that is a good one now I mean it varies like I was saying earlier when it comes to the birds um, everywhere is a good place I mean we've seen them in every country we've been through but yeah for birds anywhere is given for lions we did see them in the Serengeti this is true we saw them in Ngorongoro crater as well and that for me is in my book, the best place to see lions at the minute. Best place to see elephants, hands down at the minute, it has to be Botswana. I mean, we've been here for like three days and Chobe National Park, we just saw so many elephants, so many families. We saw them at Elephant Sands, which is the hostel we went to. So Botswana takes the biscuit for elephants, although we have seen a fair few throughout the rest of the trip. Leopard, um, well, I've only seen one and that was in the Serengeti. So I have to say the Serengeti is the best place for leopard. Best place to see rhino was in Zimbabwe. Yeah, we got very close to them there. The tour almost guarantees that you will see them. You don't get much better than that now. If I were to summarise and say where is the best place to see animals in Africa from what I've experienced, I would definitely have to say Ngorongoro Crater and the Serengeti, which kind of leapfrog into each other in Tanzania. And you can get to the northern part of the Serengeti from southern Kenya as well. So even though it's expensive and a three-day safari cost us about $550, with us also camping and not being in lodges, it was hands down worthwhile. So Ngorongoro Crater and the Serengeti, definitely. If you want to see animals, go there. You will see them and for the most part, they will be bloody impressive. And I think that is all of the padding that I can stick into this vlog. So yeah, we're in the Okavango Delta in Botswana and loving it. Oh, also, I, what did we do when we got here earlier from where, so we had the boat ride, that was amazing. Then when we got here, we just had, kind of had a chill in one of the many kind of waterways that is around the Okfango Delta. I also 
flew my drone to try and get a few aerial shots. Um, so I'm still practicing on my drone and I have crashed it a couple of times. So I still need a fair bit of practice, but hopefully I got some good aerial footage there. Off to fly the drone. We'll try and fly it. Actually works. Yeah, like it doesn't take much to knock it off. I've needed to re-collaborate it now. Is that the third time? So it's obviously a little bit fragile. to go and see Hippo, well, we're going to try and see Hippo and then make the sunset. The sun is getting lower and lower in the sky, so I'll love and leave ya. Um, but yeah, and then tomorrow back to camp and we head off to Namibia, so watch this space. Thank you. 